What's going on, guys? So I did something pretty ridiculous, and it's it's kind of exciting and cool at the same time, and I'm going to explain why I did it. I, I do have a legitimate reason, and I'll set it up to where you can fast forward through that if you want to. But um, basically, I gave my factory horn four different modes. So really, I'm just going to breeze through really quickly what they are. Mode one. Mode two. Mode 3 and Mode 4. I will be walking through the, the full wiring, everything that I had to do in order to wire this together. And I'll have a diagram popping up here on my left, your right, that shows how you can wire it together. So have a notepad ready so that you can draw out the diagram that I'm going to be making. And I want to give a quick shout out to Michael in New York who actually made a, a little donation to the channel earlier this week. So thanks a lot. And to everyone else that's watching, if you watch my other videos or if you find this one extremely helpful, then feel free to make a donation using the PayPal link that is on the home dashboard of this YouTube channel. Every little bit helps. Um, all of this stuff does cost money. So I, I do want to continue making videos and providing valuable content for the YouTube community, whether it's FJ Cruiser stuff, Ducati stuff, or IS300 stuff that is going to get that engine in the future whenever I get pistons and rods in the mail. So, and I do want to mention one other little thing. I did not damage any of the factory wiring setting this up, except for my um, factory horn wire. The one wire, I made one cut on the factory horn wiring that is two inches away from where the from where the wire goes into the plug. I'll show a little bit later in the video how I tapped into the fuse box without actually damaging the fuse box wiring. Okay, so how is this wired? You need two relays. And those two relays we are going to call the primary relay and the secondary relay. The primary relay, it gets a signal directly from the horn. So I cut the factory wiring at the horn about two inches away from the horn itself. I extended that wire and I ran it into pin 86. This is because the factory horn is a positive signal and pin 86 is the positive side of the electromagnetic coil in the relay. The negative side of that electromagnetic coil in the relay is the ground and that's 85 and that pin on both relay number one and relay number two, those two are connected directly to ground. Now pin number 30 on the primary relay connects directly to the underhood fuse box that's over the driver's side tire. Now I tapped into the factory fuse box by soldering a wire to the top of a extra fuse that I had and I plugged that fuse into a blank spot. And I have that fuse location popping up here. It's an always on fuse location so only use this location. That way the factory horn will still work whenever the vehicle key is turned off. Now the primary relay, you can use a 4 pin or a 5 pin relay. It, it doesn't matter that the relays are basically the same. The only difference is a five pin relay has the addition of pin 87A, which connects directly to pin 30 until the relay is turned on. So we're going to use that and we're going to wire pin 87 directly to pin 30 of relay number two. This is so whenever you press your factory horn button, relay number one engages and it sends power to relay number two, pin 30. On relay number two, we've already talked about pin 85 and pin 30. Pin 85 is ground, pin 30 is the power input coming from relay number one. Now relay number two, this gets a positive signal from your air horn switch button. When I mentioned that you need to buy a, an on off switch, in my case I'm using an air horn on off button that was the mistaken product, but you need an on off, either an on off button, an on off switch, something where you can turn the relay on and it will stay on and then press the button again and then the relay shuts off. So where I have that switch mounted on the interior, I have power coming to that from a different spot that I tapped into the factory fuse box that I'll have that link popping up in the, in the description if you want to see that video. After you've done all this wiring, if you wanna go and see where I tapped into the interior fuse box so that I only have power while the, the key is in the on position and they can't drain the battery slowly. So check out the link in the description if you want to see where I tapped into the factory fuse box for that video to turn on all of the relays for the fog lights, which I'm also using to turn on the button for the air horn system. So that power feed goes into the green wire that is the CH4x4 switch green wire, which is 
your power source, what comes in from the fuse. And then their wire that they have labeled as red number one goes from that switch to relay number two, pin 86. Now, if this is wired correctly, you can actually press the button without the horn wired in at this moment you can press the button and you can hear the relay click on and click off if you have power and if you have ground on pins 85 and 86. So the only two that are left are the air horn and the factory horn. So the factory horn is the horn that I want to work whenever the key is in the in the off position. For that reason the factory horn is connecting to 87A. If you want your air horn to work whenever the vehicle is in the off position you can put your air horn on pin 87A, it doesn't matter. And then pin 87, I have wired directly to the Big Bad Max air horn. So with all of this wired in together, I can press the air horn button and it engages that second relay. So whenever I turn that air horn button on and I'm sending power to relay number two, I've now told that relay to close the connection so that pin 30 is now connected to pin 87 and that relay is ready to be activated whenever power goes through it from relay number one Whenever power goes through it, it will sound the aftermarket air horn, in my case, the Big Bad Max. Going a step further, if you want to wire in LED bumper lights and LED roof lights, the extra things, as I said, you would need is you absolutely need two diodes. You cannot run this without running a diode because if you do, you will either cause a fire or burn up a fuse or best case scenario, you'll just burn the wire in half. Buy a diode that's capable of handling the load of your 12 volt relay. Uh, in, in, in my case, I think I bought two diodes that were capable of 800 milliamps because that's I, I couldn't find the exact amperage that these relays drew, but relays are not going to draw more than 800 milliamps. It's a small electromagnetic coil, it doesn't pull much electricity. The diode basically has a line on one side, a white line on one side, so that white line is the, is the side that you don't want electricity to flow back through. <clears throat> and on each of those two relays that are in my fog light system, I connected the diode, the, the white line side of the diode, to pin 86 on, for the fog lights on the bumper and then the roof lights. The other end of the wires that are connecting to each of these two diodes, I connected these between pin 87 and pin 30 on relays one and two. So coming off of relay number one, you have pin 87. Going into relay number two, you have pin 30. So I connected these two wires directly to that one wire. This way, whenever relay number one is activated by me pressing the factory horn button, the fog lights turn on along with the horn. So right now I'm gonna go on the assumption that you do not have a secondary button installed like I do so that you could press that button and now all of your fog light relays are on so that you can flip the switches and then turn your fog lights on and off. I'm going to go on the assumption that you don't have that button installed. If you still want to do the same thing but you don't want your fog lights to flash every time, you can wire the wire that you have going to pin 86 for your fog light relays to trigger those relays to come on. You can use that wire and you can connect that wire to pin 87 on relay number two. Okay, so getting into what I needed to purchase order in order to do this video. Um, so obviously I bought my air horn. It's a big bad max and it came with a relay. So that's there's that purchase. It didn't come with any switches or anything. They expect you to figure out how to wire all of that in. This relay is from a box of relays that I think I bought. I think it was like a five pack that I got on Amazon. I'll have the link in the description. But basically there are five relays and then five of these little pigtails. They separate. They're not all three bundled together like this. I just I stuck them together and I'm having trouble getting them apart. Um, these relays, they're actually really good. They've been covered in mud. They've been in the engine bay for the last three, four years. These pigtails are for Bosch style relays and the Bosch style relay is this one that I have in my hand. And it's also the style of relay that came with the Big Bad Max. So you need that. And according to the Big Bad Max wiring, um, it says, it, I think it recommends using 16 gauge wire. So you'll need six to 10 feet of wire, depending on where you, um, where you mount your horn. And then the way I tapped into my factory a horn system you need 6 to 10 feet of wire that's yeah, 16 to 18 gauge wire so that your factory horn can still work because I'm, I'm using the factory horn as a trigger and I'm also using the factory horn to be controlled by these relays that are now kind of above the, uh, the driver's side tire. To switch between the factory horn and the aftermarket air horn, in my case the Big Bad Max, 
you need some kind of an on off switch. A momentary press air horn button is not going to work. You're using this to engage the relay and leave the relay on so that it switches over from the factory horn to the air horn. The extra stuff that you will need if you are going to have your fog lights triggered also, you would need a secondary on off switch. In my case, I'm already using the on off switch that I showed a second ago that turns my fog light switches on. So I'll be using that switch. And for every relay you're going to trigger for the set of fog lights, in my case I'm triggering two relays, uh, the, the bumper fog lights and the roof fog lights, you will need one diode and a length of wire that will make it from where your horn relays are going to be mounted to where your fog light relays are mounted. In my case, I just ran two small sections of wire from where I have the relays mounted over the, uh, over the driver's side tire into where I have my switches mounted on the left of my steering wheel and I just I triggered the fog lights on uh, coming off at the back side of those switches so I just I wired in the wires to that point. And just to show what I have set up here and with the, uh, the buttons and how they work and actually just ignore this <laughs> if you're going to ask a question like what is this why do you have this this is actually just a coolant pressure coolant temperature gauge it shows me that my cooling system is working I did some modifications in my last video to get rid of all the plastic and this is just monitoring everything to make sure it all works that's why my wiring here is a little bit of a mess it's because this is temporary so I didn't install any permanent wiring uh, so as I said the horn has four modes so that's mode number one. I want to enable mode number two. This button, it really just turns on my off-road lights so that these switches work over here. But that turns on my whole relay box that I have on the front passenger side of the vehicle. So now when I press the button, see the lights flash. For the air horn, if I want to turn that on, then that turns on the secondary relay. So now I, it operates the same way where I can have the lights off or the lights on. And this is known as a Toyota small switch. It's slightly different dimensions. It's a little bit shorter and fatter than these others, where these other switches are. So if you wanted to order a switch to go in here, you can just order a Toyota small switch and it removes and installs the same way as all of these other ones. You just have the tabs that hold it in place. The reason behind this is kind of multifaceted. Like, you know, like one, there's the side of me that I have a motorcycle, uh, the red one, I'm, I'm working on the black one. It's not mine, that's someone else's. Um, but I have a motorcycle and I like to be visible, so that's a thought that's on the forefront of my mind most of the time, whether I'm driving or whether I'm riding, because I've been riding for 15 years. So I want to be seen. That is why my fog lights are coming on. It's why I had the idea to. And yeah, I know it's a massive SUV. You don't need to be seen, right? The other reason behind why I'm doing this is actually I, I want to have the, um, it's mainly adding the air horn to the system. So the air horn in the system, it's, you know, it's a big SUV. I feel like you need a more manly horn than just the, hey, get out of the way you know like the little wimpy little Toyota factory horn sound so like I want a bigger louder horn but I need a way to switch between the two because in Hawaii we have safety inspections and this specific SUV was actually it had a, an air horn on it that didn't work when I had it shipped over here but the previous owner put one on my first safety inspection they saw the air horn and they said hey you can't have that on the vehicle so I had to take it out right there in front of the guy and then he passed my safety inspection it's lame, yeah, I know, but the safety inspection site has state laws that they're trying to abide by, otherwise their license gets taken away. So that's the short of it. So I, I need a way to switch back and forth between my factory horn and my air horn, and I don't want to press a separate button for the air horn. Another small thing is when I ordered years ago, I've actually had the switch for a long time, but I ordered a CH4x4 air horn button that it was supposed to be a momentary press button but they had a mistake in manufacturing and they actually made a an on off switch I decided to keep it instead of return it because I could use it for this it's just now four years later five years later I'm getting around to actually doing that so um, that's all of the reasons why I'm doing it this specific way. Right now I'm going to go through and I'm going to show how I tapped into the fuse boxes and how I tapped into the factory wiring. All right, so the air horn's mounted down there. Uh, this piece I've actually taken off. So the horn wire, this is the factory horn here. And you can't see, but 
I, I cut this about two inches away from from where it uh, from where it goes into the factory horn. And I have the one wire that runs from this that goes to pin 87A of relay number two. So if I pop this fuse box cover off, you can see I have this 20 amp fuse here. I soldered a wire directly onto it, and this is the uh, this is the positive leg that comes out of the fuse box. Did not have to hack into any of the factory wiring so that this is sending power to this. Now this. Uh, this is the position that is it always on so this fuse is always hot so the, the place where I put this fuse is always hot so it always has power going down this wire just like the factory horn system the factory horn system was completely untouched I want to reiterate that just in case anybody's like how could you hack up your vehicle wiring like, I didn't I tapped in the fuse box here and I tapped an interior fuse box in a similar place. So check out that video in the description if you want to see how I tapped into the interior fuse box. Relay number one is the one that gets the signal wire. So this this horn wire goes from here to here on the factory wiring side and connects straight into pin 86 on relay number one. This is pin 87, this yellow wire that goes into pin 30 and this is my signal wire that runs down and I have it splitting off into two different two different wire sections that's there's one diode on one side and one diode on the other side then that goes into my switches that I have over here and coming in the interior now these since these are the two switches that I, I'm using um, I actually ran the diodes into the uh, the signal wire that comes off like after you flip this switch it sends a signal to your fog lights so I'm using that to connect there this button here if you look how the buttons are set up. So whenever I have the off-road lights pressed, now I know my off-road lights are engaged. And that's sending power here. If you notice, that light goes on and off with everything else. So whenever this is pressed, it sends power to this. So now I know my fog lights shine whenever I, I press the, uh, the factory horn button on the steering wheel. And then this, uh, the horn light, lights up whenever I press this and that lets me know that my air horn is now engaged and uh, so not only will the lights flash but the air horn will also flash and then if I press this and turn that off then hey look no air horn light so this is air horn with lights this air horn by itself and then that's factory horn by itself factory light system <laughs> it's crazy this is this is ridiculous this really is ridiculous so um, I think it's cool though. Let me know in the comments down below because I, I think it's kind of like mad scientist type of uh, territory. But let me know in the comments down below what you, uh, what you think. That's it though. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and yeah, leave, uh, leave suggested ideas on other things that you want to see me, um, see me talk about. But uh, as always, thanks a lot for watching and God bless you guys.